somewhere in the video there was uh, there was some discussion of adjustments under section 482. Let's say we have a situation, uh, let's make it a simple one of a U.S. parent, foreign subsidiary. Okay, let's say there's no subpart F income down here, so we don't have uh, the offset of uh, income being recognized in the U.S. And we'll ignore guilty uh, in this discussion. Let's just say that the IRS comes in and says, for whatever intercompany transactions there have been, there should have been 100 of additional income at the U.S. parent level. And because of that 100 of additional income, they impose on the U.S. parent 100 of additional income, which means 21 of additional tax. This is a, an adjustment made by the U.S. IRS, and that forces the U.S. company to pay an additional 21 to the U.S. government. Does the U.S. company have the 100 in cash? Okay, I see your head shaking. No, Jen. Where is that 100 of cash? It's in the sub. Tax rules, uh, at least for those of you who have, a, a, let's say, some knowledge of accounting, you'll, let's say, see that tax rules follow good accounting. If there's income, which is usually a credit, uh, you know, in the accounting sense, then there should be an offsetting debit, which is represented by the cash or a receivable or something else. So the IRS uh, looks at this and the, uh, the tax rules and the regulations look at this and they say, well, gee, if the U.S. Uh, doesn't have the 100, then we have to account for it in some fashion. The 100 is down at the foreign subsidiary level. The U.S. Uh, 482 regulations say that if FS cannot actually pay that 100 up to the parent, and normally it can't, if the U.S. can't pay that, I'm sorry, if the foreign company can't pay it to the U.S. company, then what must have happened? the U.S. parent must have made a 100 capital contribution to the subsidiary. So this is one of those adjustments that uh, the U.S. company can, if it's going to receive payment, create a receivable which so that cash can be received tax-free because it's already paid the 21 on that 100 of recognized taxable income. But if, as is usually the case, there's no basis for the subsidiary in law in the local country to make that payment, the U.S. company uh, just effectively has more basis in the shares, more cost basis in the shares and the subsidiary. And then if it's the opposite, it's the dividend and the tributary. Yeah, if it's, if it's the opposite, then, uh, in other words, if we were to reverse these and show the U.S. on the bottom uh, so that uh, if we, if instead of FS, this is U.S. and this is foreign, if the uh, additional 100 is not at this level but now is here, but the cash is up at this level, in other words, uh, the 100 of additional, let's try a new picture, I think that might be, that might be helpful. Uh, there's a foreign parent, foreign parent, and U.S. sub, and there's been a, uh, the IRS has imposed a transfer pricing adjustment. The IRS is saying there's a hundred of additional income at this level, at the U.S. company level, but 
because the foreign parent has not transferred a hundred of additional cash down to the US company, the actual cash is sitting up here. And this is, uh, this is the point uh, you were making. Well, if the US company transferred cash of 100, actually never received the cash, so in effect transferred 100 up here, because it's going from subsidiary to parent, it's like a distribution with respect to stock. And you look to Section 301. If there's E&P at the U.S. company level, it's a dividend, and there could be U.S. withholding tax of 30% unless reduced by treaty. If there's no E&P or if you exhaust the E&P, it's a return of capital. And then if you exhaust the uh, capital, it's, of course, uh, capital gain. And those are your basic 301 rules. Now, this is one of the two adjustments. Uh, the other adjustment, let's, let's go back to our uh, U.S. parent foreign subsidiary. And again, we're saying that there's been 100 of additional income here. The second type of adjustment is that for U.S. tax purposes, if the parent, in this case, had 100 of increase, then there is a corresponding 100 decrease in the income of the foreign subsidiary. If we're talking about a few years ago, maybe that just reduces the earnings and profits of the foreign subsidiary. Earnings and profits, of course, is a U.S. concept to determine, you know, how uh, a distribution with respect to shares will be treated under Section 301. Today, we have guilty. So the reduction in 100 may well reduce the amount of guilty which the U.S. company will, the parent, will realize under the new guilty rules. So this second type of adjustment uh, may have a, uh, an effect in this, you know, this type of situation. Remember, guilty is the base for the guilty income inclusion at the parent level is, for the most part, the total income of the subsidiary. So if there's a 482 adjustment up at the U.S. level and the income at the foreign subsidiary level is therefore reduced by that same 100, then that reduces the base of income that you use to calculate the guilty income inclusion. So two types of adjustments.